Our current projects are focused on the Marshallese and Hispanic populations. We went through about a year-long process to work with the community so that they could define what needs were most important to them and what projects they wanted to work on. And the community chose primarily diabetes because diabetes is so prevalent in the Marshallese community. In fact, it's about 50% of the adult population has diabetes compared to 8% nationally. And so we're doing a family model of diabetes self-management education, which is really unique and predicated on the Marshallese culture. The Marshallese is a collectivist culture and they really uh, honor families and they really hold tight to family values. And so we're building on those family values to help design an intervention that's specifically tailored to their culture. Uh, for the, not only the Marshallese, it's overall for Pacific communities. Um, in the Pacific, there's better data in the Pacific because we don't aggregate a lot of the diabetes data here in the United States. And it's around, you know, in the 30s and 40s of percent. So in the United States, it's 8% for the general populations. But in the Pacific, you know, we have communities that in range about even 30 to 50%. So, but in Micronesia, it's about 30 to 40%. Um, and then, so therefore here, and there, that's a community that, group that are migrating to Arkansas, Northwest um, Arkansas. And so the, I, I know the numbers here are, you know, also extremely, extremely high. You know, in many community, you know, individuals have diabetes, but then in our community, it seems like the entire, in every household has someone with diabetes. And, um, and then therefore, you know, the community is, is highly impacted by the sheer number of individuals with, with diabetes. And, and, then, and therefore, um, in order for us to address it, you have to address it on the family level and at a society level. The other interesting thing about diabetes is that a lot of our breadwinners, you know, people who are working, um, providing for their families, they have type 2 diabetes. So, and I think that's making it a lot more difficult, you know, for, for us to address it. It's because, really, you know, they are busy with work and that kind of stuff too, and then they have to deal with diabetes. So all, we have a lot of that kind of narratives around diabetes and how it affects not only our family, but then our communities in, in general. How did I find out I had diabetes? I found out when I was 23 years old, when I first, um, when I had my second child or baby, I had um, gestational diabetes. And that's when I first found out about it. I was <laughs> the 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 thing about diabetes is that most of the time the complications don't come early on, you know, and then um, by the time complications come on, you know, there's nothing you can do but amputate. So, and I think um, a lot of the, and I did research on this, a lot of the Pacific Islanders, including Marshallese, they, we have a pain narrative. You know, we only address it when the pain is there or when they're you're feeling sick or, or something like that. But with diabetes, you don't feel sick or get pain early on. So, and then, so it's very hard to manage diabetes before the complications because of that pain narrative. So we have to address, that's something that we need to address up front. Like, do not go to the doctor only when you feel the pain or uncomfortable and things like that. You need to go to the doctor before you get there. And I think that, and by working then with families, family members can help motivate or, you know, help the patient go see the doctor and then take their medicine and things like that. 
So it needs more of a group effort versus an individual making the initiative. I need to take care of myself. And, um, and it's also part of our culture. We are from a highly collectivistic culture where the collective, you know, individuals get support from the collective. And it's also the collective's responsibility for the individual to be health healthy. So, and I think using all those cultural dynamics to address diabetes is very, very important. It affects, diabetes affect me and my family in so many ways that um, my husband and my children, they know that there are times if, if I'm not careful with what I eat, it might bring my, it might bring my blood sugar all the way up to a point where you know, they would have to take me to the hospital because I wouldn't be feeling well. Or uh, if it's too low, either way, I can sense it, I can feel it, and my family can and can tell. To be honest, I try to make some changes, but I know it's hard if you're the only one in the family that has to eat different things. And I've tried in the past, try to get what I eat, but every time I look over at my family's plates and they've got something that I want, I'll go for it. It has a lot to do with our culture and the way we eat. Um, we're used to eating rice, meat, uh, fruits and vegetables are not really always part of our diet. Pinangan <laughs> Chetian Minugo, Jiloi Pelo, I ran a tiny gate. Igitian Amloi, I trivial all over. Igitian Nutolo, in Selenogo. A chun minimiti chip carcana loi, in Baranotillo, I ring a magni miruno, and other name a chalak manga mail. Ne a maduno, Ilkunquilo, I mojanola and bunier and quillo, I written. Our traditional food was very healthy, you know, it was very, you know, organic food and, you know, whole food and all that kind of stuff too. And then the, the new diet that we now have is actually an introduced diet and, um, and is, is doing a lot of, and we're now trying to go back to that eating, you know, whole food and fresh vegetables and things like that. But it's hard, any kind of transition, any kind of change is very, very hard. And then to, to make it even more complicated, we have a lot of, we're now in a different environment. You know, a lot of our traditional foods, the fruits and vegetables that we're, that was available in our islands that we are familiar with, they're not available here. You know, just because you can't grow it here, of the climates and things like that. So now it's like, a introduction of other types of fruits and vegetables and and how healthy they are for you and then and then on top of that it's also taste you know what I mean you know if you are used to tasting a lot of salty high salt um, you know preserved food it's hard for you to go from that to bland because it makes all the fruits and vegetables say it's bland but it's something if but something we can learn you know what I mean I think in a 
in our culture, there's a lot of, um, I always explain it like this, you know, you have, you know, in an atoll, there are two islands, you know, and you always need to go from one island to another island to do a visit. But there's a point when you're, in a, when you're either you're swimming to the other island or on a canoe or on a boat or whatever, there's a point where the fresh water and the salt water meet and the current is very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very rough to go through that. But if you go through it, and if you hold on and, and go through it, you get to calm water and you get to your destination. So same thing with all these kind of changes also in our Pacific diet. You know, we are going to go through a tough period of getting used to the taste of fruits and vegetable, learning how to taste it. But that's just rough water. It's the meeting of old concepts, new concepts and things like that. But once we get over it, we can get to our destination because we all want Pacific Islanders and Marshallese to be healthy.